what's going on guys? I am James Michael. This is Jamie's Reviews, but today we are not reviewing. We are educating the world. The runner's world. Not the magazine, but just the people in general who like to run. So I can't tell you how many times I get the question asked, Jamie, this shoe versus this shoe? And I would say maybe like two out of five times, it's a valid question. They're asking about two similar shoes with two similar purposes. And I'm all for that. But so many other times I get asked about shoes that are like for completely different purposes besides being a running shoe itself. And you're probably thinking purposes, Jamie, are all running shoes meant for running? Yes. But each running shoe has a specific purpose of what it's used for in the training regimen of running. Whether you're a long distance runner, short sprints, whatever, there's a shoe for each category. And even within the categories, there are subcategories. But today I will try my best to keep it simple as possible. I'll be going over the 10 types of running shoes. 10 types? Yes, 10 types. Like I said, there's for your subtypes, but we'll just keep it simple. But let's get right into it. Starting off with your daily trainers. So what is a daily trainer? Well, it's what it sounds like. It's a shoe that's kind of made for a little bit of everything. It's not so light that it's gonna be like not durable. It's not so high cushion and supportive where it's gonna be very heavy and clunky. It's like an everyday running shoe. It's gonna be your Nike Pegasus, your Saucony Rides, your Brooks Ghost, shoes like that. Every brand has one. It's like the bread and butter of most brands. You gotta, you gotta have a daily training shoe. So my example, and all these will be sketches because I have each category of each shoe for an example, but every brand has their version of what I'm talking about. But anyway, this is the Go Run Ride 8. It is a daily trainer. It's cushioned, it's not super heavy, it's not super light, it's versatile. You got a good amount of rubber, it has a little flex to it, but a little structure. It's a good medium of everything. Not too much of this, not too much of that. Just a good overall middle. If you're a person who's like, I don't run but twice a week and I go maybe three miles at a time and I don't care about how fast I'm going, you may only need one shoe. If you have one shoe, you probably should pick a daily trainer. That way, if you decide to do anything else, like something faster, something longer, you're kind of you're kind of safe. You, you kind of have that shoe that can do it all. It may not be great at everything, but it'll be decent at most things. Now the next category is your lightweight trainers. Now these are very similar to the daily trainers, but they are lighter weight. Now this is the Gold Run 7 Plus. It's a lighter weight, more nimble, more flexible option for those who want a faster option, a lighter option. Not every run requires you to have a lot of cushion or a lot of support. So for compensation, you're getting a lighter ride, which is always good, a more nimble ride. And this shoe is good for those who don't want a lot of shoe. If you're like, man, this shoe's too clunky, too heavy, this is your options. And I would say within the last two or three years, it's been very popular of brands pushing these kind of shoes. This is gonna be your New Balance Beacons, your Saucony Canvaras, shoes like that. It can't be a daily trainer, but it's a lighter weight option for those who want less shoe or want to go a little bit faster. And sometimes you may have to compensate a little bit of cushion and a little bit of support, but that's okay. You got options. But Jamie, I don't care about going fast. I want a shoe that provides the cushion for the pushing when it comes to the pace. And this is where the high cushion trainer comes in. Now, as you can see, this thing's bulky. It is big. This is like my third pair. Actually, this pair hasn't been used yet. It's still fresh. Hmm, I might give it away. If you're a size 11, let me know. Now, this is the shoe you use when you want to have more comfort under your foot. You prefer a more plush feel on your foot. You don't care about responsiveness. You don't care about going fast and having a lot of speed. You just want to get through the run. It could be a good shoe for those who train and need that recovery run. And the purpose of that is not to go fast. It's a nice way to add mileage without having that wear and tear. And these shoes are meant to protect you from that wear and tear. Your knees are hurting. You had a pretty tough training week, so you need some recovery miles. This shoe's for that. And from what I understand, some people who are a little bit bigger, a little more heftier, a little more heavier, your heavy duty runners, they might want this as a daily trainer because it has more cushion to compensate for their weight. But yes, great for comfort, not so great for speed. And that's okay. And now you know. All right, so what over daily trainers, lightweight trainers, and then the high cushion trainers. But now we have something that's meant for training, but kind of get into the race field. We call those shoes performance trainers. Now... It's simply a shoe that's meant for training, but has the speed, it has the bounce, it has the feedback, the responsiveness that can be used in a race. These shoes will be light, have just enough cushion to be used for racing and training, and maybe a little more stiffer because it's meant for speed. So you might have a, a little flex, but it's meant to be fast. If it goes to run a fast pace, 
These shoes can do it. You may be asking Jamie, what about the lightweight trainer? What's, what's the difference? The lightweight trainers won't be as responsive. For example, this shoe flexes pretty nicely, but when going fast, you might want more of a little stiffness, something with more rigidity. This one, it's a little more stiff, which in turn helps with the speed. It makes it a little bit more efficient. Now, is it that way for everybody? No. So for some people, this may be a racing shoe. For others, you might go with this. But if you're someone who wants a straight up speed shoe, straight up race day shoe, well, here we go. We got the racing flat. Now the big difference here is the uppers. These uppers are gonna be a lot more minimal because they're not meant for a high support. They're not meant to be comfortable for all your runs. They're meant for one thing, that's speed. That's race day speed. Now a lot of these racing flats will have just enough cushion to get you through the race. So are these comfortable? I think so. Are they comfortable for, you know, your 20 mile long recovery runs? Probably not. You're probably, your feet are gonna be a little tired. But if you use it correctly, it could be a great shoe. Now, some people use this as a training shoe. For example, you may know Megan on the channel. She's been on a few reviews here and there, and she uses this shoe as part of her training shoes. But she's also someone who's a little bit more intense when it comes to training. She's built that speed, she's built that strength, she's built the ability to use these kind of shoes for something that I wouldn't use it for. But this shoe is meant for race day, which also means it could be used for speed work. Anything that resembles a race day pace, this is probably a good option. And if you're a sprinter who's like, man, I want a shoe that's fast, I can kind of train in when I'm not wearing spikes, probably a good option. So here we are. You have your race day shoe, but you know, you've been reading about these other shoes with these, uh, these things called carbon plates. The Vaporfly, the Carbon X, the Endorphin Pro. You've been hearing about these shoes. So where do those shoes fit in? And well here, you have the carbon plate racing shoe. Now these shoes are meant for race day just like these, but it has one thing that's different, the carbon plate. Now the carbon plate kind of works as a lever. It's supposed to help with your foot strike being more efficient. So when you're coming through your stride, you're using less energy, it's more efficient, it makes it easier to go fast. You still have to run fast. It's not gonna run for you, but it, it kind of helps with that whole transition phase and everyone's using it. Vapor flies are everywhere. And in 2020, just about every single major brand will have one of these, including Skechers. I think this comes out around March. Don't quote me on that. I personally believe in using these for race day or kind of just race simulation, if you want to see how it's going to feel. I wouldn't use these for your everyday track runs, everyday training runs, everyday speed work. You know, you use this as a tool. Let your body adapt to being able to train without the carbon plates, and then use the carbon plate shoes for that extra spark on race day. But what do I know? But Jamie, can I wear the carbon plate shoes in my race? Okay, which race? I run the 800 in track. No, don't do that. What you need is a spike. So here we are, we got spikes. Now spikes come in various categories. You got the sprint spikes, you got the distance spikes, middle distance spikes, cross country spikes. So there's a lot of categories of spike, but just in general, the spike is meant to grip on the track. It's meant to be lightweight, it's race day, it's race simulation, it's straight on speed work, all out pace. This is where you're going all out speed. Now, can you use a road shoe on the track? Yes, you can. But the purpose of this is to grip the track, give you that traction, and get you moving with speed. The uppers of these shoes are pretty minimal. Now, are these shoes comfortable? Most times not. And typically, you won't have these shoes on for any longer than 9.5 seconds to maybe like 40 minutes. Depending if you're a 100 runner who's fast as Usain Bolt, or if you're running like a 10K on the track. The higher distances, that's when you can, you can kind of like maybe go with a flat instead of a spike because you're going in a higher distance, your turnover won't be as fast, the traction in the spikes won't matter as much. So if you have a 5K, 10K on the track and you want to wear Vaporfly, that's when you might have some leeway, but even then you probably put off with a spike or a racing flat. But that's neither here or there. And they also come in flats. So if you want that same feel without the spike, go with these. In some races like cross country, the environments might change, so sometimes you might need a spike, sometimes you don't want a spike, but you still want that flat, minimal feel. So you got options, but spikes, flats, kind of the same besides the spike itself, but you get what I mean. So, so far, all these shoes have been road shoes slash track spikes, but sometimes you might want to take the run onto the trails. And of course, we got trail shoes. So trail shoes are meant for the trail, simple as that. Now, these come in subcategories. You got stability trail shoes, you got high cushion trail shoes, you got the speed trail shoes, 
But the entire point of a trail shoe is that you have traction for the dirt, the grime, the mud, you have protection around the toes, the toe caps. The uppers and knees will be a lot more built up as far as just giving you the protection from the trails. Because you don't want to get hurt, you don't want to slip and fall. I've done that before, I've actually done a trail race with the road shoe. Long story short, I didn't know it was a trail race until I got there. So, you know, I paid the price and got me a trail shoe after the fact. Hindsight 2020. Now, a trail shoe will have lugs. The lugs will grip the ground, grip the dirt. Road shoes just won't cut it. And these will get the job done. Now, some trail shoes have rock plates, which is meant to protect you from stones, rocks, gravel, anything that would like harm your foot under your arch. It's meant to be a barrier between you and the ground because trails are unpredictable. Like I said, it could be mud, rocks, stones, gravel, grass, you don't know. So this kind of gets you covered no matter what. So if you like trails, get a trail shoe. And now here we are with the 10th shoe, the final category of running shoe. We have the stability shoe. Now the purpose of this shoe is for stability, meaning for those who have weak arches, maybe your foot's kind of flat and it flexes too much, maybe you have weak ankles, whatever it may be. Because for some runners, when they run, they may pronate, which means your body kind of compensates the shock and kind of absorbs it and you kind of roll it inward to kind of take that shock within the stride. Some people do what, uh, dare I say it, they over pronate. They roll inward a little too excessively. Now, how excessive is too excessive? No one knows. Everyone thinks everyone over pronates. So apparently we're all should be in stability shoes. But the point is, there's an option for that. Now, different companies do it different ways. Some use guide rails. It kind of cups your foot from the side, so you can't go inward or outward, it kind of guides you straight. Some shoes do medial postings, which means they actually make the midsole here stiffer in that medial side, so when you roll in, it doesn't give as much. There's a whole argument over if stability is good for you, is it bad for you, does it help, does it all that, and we're not going there in this video. This video is already getting long as it is. Now, stability shoes can come also in categories that I mentioned before. You have lightweight stability shoes, you have trail stability shoes, you have just about any kind of stability shoe that I mentioned. Maybe not spikes, because spikes are typically just neutral, but yes, most shoes are neutral, but then you also have stability options. All right, so those are the 10 types of running shoes, and there's probably more subtypes, but I'm not trying to be here all day. The big takeaway that I hope you guys get from this video is that there is a shoe for specific purposes. It's kind of like cars. People say running shoes are just running shoes, you run the shoe. Well, so are vehicles. So when people ask me, Jamie, what should I get? The Speed 6? Oh, the max road. It's hard for me to give you a good answer because what is your purpose? Do you want something that's meant for a long, comfortable, supportive ride? Or something that's meant for speed, going fast, and sexy? I don't know. Like I said, it's like vehicles. It's like, do you want to move some furniture over to your new apartment in a truck? Or are you racing someone a NASCAR? They're both vehicles, but different purposes. And yes, you can drop both of them if you want to. And if you really want to race someone in an 18-wheeler, sure, do that. But you know what? I'm going to go with the speed race car. Because, you know, if we want to like race, I'm going to go with this kind of shoe. So yes, purpose. Each shoe has a purpose. Now, can some shoes fit multiple purposes? Yes. Can some shoes that are made for one purpose be used for another purpose? Yes. You won't die. You won't blow up. Like I said, some shoes can be daily trainers for some people. So for me, this is a race day shoe. For some others, it may be a daily trainer. For me, this is a daily trainer. For others, this may be a high cushion shoe. It all depends. But just know that each shoe is made for a purpose. So hopefully this video helped you guys out a little bit. Maybe we can all be a little more knowledgeable. So yeah, that's all I have. Maybe let me know what kind of shoes that you like to run in. I prefer lightweight trainers and daily trainers mostly. But that's what I run mostly in. But some of you guys might like racing shoes. So what type of shoes do you guys run in? Let me know down below. And with that said, subscribe, smash that like button, all that other stupid YouTube stuff. And as always, be sure to stay in school. Don't do drugs. And if you can, keep it tight.